Hey everybody, Kevin Walters here with Kevin's Auto Channel and let's dig into this SYNC 4 system in this Ford F-150. What's SYNC 4 all about? I'm glad you asked. Let's find out. Alright, so SYNC 4 in the 2021 and 2022 F-150s, mine is a 2022 of course, it is a lot different than what was in the Mustang, my 2021 uh, Ford Mustang. Uh, it is a lot more, well to start off with, it's bigger. Uh, as you can see, this is a 12-inch uh, 12 12-inch 12 display, and it looks amazing. So, the SYNC 4 system features wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, if you've heard me talk about it in the past, I talked about it in the last video, I had a lot of trouble with my uh, SYNC 3 system. Uh, Apple CarPlay, of course, it was wired, but half the time it would not recognize my phone, even with it plugged in. And I would try, you know, turning the car off, opening the door, and then starting it back up, and it still would not register CarPlay. Uh, and it happened to me quite a few times. And not to say that. SYNC 3 was bad or anything, it could have been the SYNC 3 system, it could have been uh, the a software bug on the iPhone. I'm not sure, but it, it, it would give me trouble a lot of times. It would not recognize my phone. Uh, so far, with the wireless CarPlay in the SYNC 4 system, I have not had any trouble with my phone uh, recognizing. Now, the first week I had this truck, I had a little bit of trouble with the wireless. I don't know if it was connectivity issue or what, but it would recognize and show up. But, uh, like here on uh, Google Maps, it would hesitate a lot. Um, and, and it would be very, uh, it would drop a lot of frames and then catch back up. And I had a lot of problems with that. Now, I updated my iPhone to the newest version of iOS, and it seems to be working better. But that first week, I just used the, um, the stock, stock navigation uh, because I was having... I, that, the hesitation was getting on my nerves. But now it seems to um, be back working again and fluid and smooth so let's get into dive into the sync 4 system and see what it is all about so let's start with audio now you do get i believe it's uh three months of sirius xm uh complimentary sub complimentary subscription when you buy a Ford vehicle, and of course that is a pay subscription after that, uh, but you do have your AM, FM, radio, uh, you do have Sirius, you have Bluetooth, and of course your phone, which is sort of the same thing. But you can see the layout of the screen, of course it's a very nice layout, very very big and you can see everything very well uh, if you go back to sources 
Of course, you've got your Sirius XM. Of course, I have not started the trial yet. I usually, I'm, I'm not a big uh, Sirius XM uh, fan. Uh, most of the time, I stream from my phone, listen to what I want to. I'll use Spotify or something like that. Let's see. Go back to sources. Of course, you've got your Bluetooth audio with your phone and that takes you back into CarPlay and opens up your music app if you have music loaded onto your phone. Now with Apple CarPlay of course if you hit the squares down there then you have your um, your main home screen of Apple CarPlay so you can go through your apps. Like I said most of the time I will use um, Spotify as my audio source just because it's got my library and everything I listen to in there. Go back. Of course you've got, you know, on Apple CarPlay you've got your your phone and messages and all the other stuff that you're used to seeing on Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for that fact um, but and I usually use Google Maps I've had a lot of problems with Apple Maps in the past it's fine as long as you're not navigating somewhere I've the two times that I've used Apple Maps a couple years apart for my navigation put an address in and it did not take me to the right place. One time it told me my destination was in the middle of the interstate. So I do not usually trust Apple Maps as far as navigation goes. But you do have that option if you do prefer Apple Maps. And I have not tried Waze on this yet. Just because I usually, I usually always use Google Maps. I've never had any problems with it. Uh, it's always worked for me. That's my preference. Of course, you've got stock navigation. Now, stock navigation seems to work very well. Works a lot like Google Maps. Uh, seems to be very accurate. Nice uh, layout on the screen. Uh, you do have, you know, all of your, most of your uh, roads listed. So, you know exactly, you know, where you need to turn and where you need to go. Uh, you do have your search option here where you can put in your address, your recents, if you have any recents, and then your favorites down there. And of course, if you want to, if you do not want the secondary screen on your layout, all you have to do is hit that and then you are full screen. Uh, favorites, uh, you can edit sort of like a home screen for you. So you can edit what you see here, um, what what you would like to access quickly. Now as far as um, your apps go, of course, you know, you do have some apps built in. But if you go back to favorites... This truck does have zone lighting, so you can go through, and at night, if you need to light up your work area, if you're working near your truck, of course, you can toggle on and off different lighting zones with your LEDs to uh, shine a little light on your workspace. Then we have the main Sync 4 settings uh, tab. And of course, here you can uh, set up uh, different things. If you go into vehicle, you can uh, toggle on and off your 30 minute uh, max idle. So the truck will automatically uh, shut off after 30 minutes of idling. Like if you just want to warm it up for a little bit in the morning before, on a winter's uh, morning before you go to work. Uh, rear occupant alert, when you cut the truck off, uh, you'll get a little uh, message telling you to make sure you check your back seats if you have children back there. I don't have any children, so I really don't need that on. My key, 
you can uh, you can set up uh, your key fobs. It comes with two, as do most vehicles. You can set up your key fob to uh, with your preferences. Is like if you want to set your radio station and different things like that, and then set your my key to that. Then when you enter the vehicle with your key fob, your settings will automatically be ready in the truck. And then if someone else enters with a different key fob, that key fob could have different settings on it. So it's pretty nice. Per personalize your, your key fob and your settings. That way when you get in the truck, it's the way you want it. So remote start settings uh, for your key fob. You know, it'll automatically detect whether it's cold or warm outside and set either the uh, air or the heat with your climate control, your seats, um, you can have that whether it's uh, heated or not, and how long the truck runs for. You can have it run for 5, 10, or 15 minutes to warm the truck up or cool it off depending on the weather. Of course you've got an ohm mode onboard I can't talk today of course you have an onboard modem uh, in the truck for uh, Wi-Fi uh, your remote star setup um, your wipers uh, do you want a courtesy wipe lighting uh, does have automatic high beams in it uh, daytime running lights welcome lighting is when you when you're walking up to the truck and the key fob is detected, the lights will automatically turn on as far as your perimeter lights go and it will help you see if there's any obstacles before you get in your truck. And your, of course you've got your uh, zone lighting settings also. locks uh, auto unlock uh, most of this is with your key fob does your truck automatically unlock as soon as you walk up to it and of course when you hit your you can set when you hit your unlock button on your key fob do you want just your driver's door to unlock or do you want all the doors to unlock so pretty straightforward as far as settings go uh, clock, of course you can set your clock, uh, general settings, you can go in here, you know, whether you're in Canada or anywhere else besides North America uh, or the United States, you can know, uh, you can change your Fahrenheit to Celsius or miles to kilometers or whatever you want to, ever how you want to see your um, display. And then you've got your screen settings. Then you do have a vehicle hotspot, Wi-Fi, that you can turn on or off. Of course, you will need a data plan to use that. You do get Amazon Alexa built into the truck. It comes with a three-year complimentary subscription when you purchase a new Ford and then of course after that I'm sure it is a paid subscription after that you do have Ford assistant and if you're in a city uh, where there are a lot of valets you can uh, lock down some of the vehicle to where they can't mess with a lot of your settings and other things as far as uh, your features go, you know, you do have towing, zone lighting, of course, uh, driver's assistance, um, which is your lane keep assist, uh, pre-collision assist, you know, do you want it to uh, detect if, some, if you're coming up on something, a uh, vehicle very fast, and it will alert you and ding to let you know, hey, you know, there's a car slowing down in front of you. You do have your park aid sensors in the rear. Of 
cross traffic alert, reverse brake assist, and driver alert if you're not paying attention to the road. Uh, towing, you can uh, customize your towing settings to each trailer if you would like to. And of course, uh, your zone lighting. So all you have to do is hit your power button and then you can uh, turn on and off, you know, different zones to light up whatever area you need to light up. And you do have your owner's manual built into the SYNC 4 system so you don't have to go digging through the dash to find that. Now, as far as your secondary screen goes, you have uh, several options to view on it. Right now, mine is on my fuel economy. Uh, you got your trip meters built in over here if you want something different um, in your center cluster. Uh, you've got your phone that you can see. Uh, you do have, like if you want something on your main screen uh, different than your navigation, like if you want your radio over here, you can have your navigation on your uh, secondary screen. And of course, vice versa. You can have your uh, navigation on your big screen and your radio on your little screen. And then you can also access your zone lighting from your secondary screen. And you can see, you can have your off-road view on there to see your different angles. You have eco behavior, your acceleration score, deceleration score, and your speed score. Uh, if you're trying to save gas, that will teach you how to feather the throttle and the brakes to get maximum fuel economy. And we're back to fuel economy. So SYNC 4 is very, uh, very user friendly. It's very straightforward. It's great. I love the big screen. And I love that you get two screens in one. This right here the outline of your main screen right here is about the size that my SYNC 3 system was the whole system in the Mustang. So you can see it has grown a few more inches and uh, a lot clearer, um, better, better screen in my opinion. Nice and bright. You can see it in the daytime. It's not very pixelated so it has, has a really good pixel count in it to where it's very sleek and very clean. So that was a very quick overview of the SYNC 4 system in uh, modern 2021-2022 uh, Fords. Like I said, my Mustang was a 2021, but it still had the old SYNC 3 system in it. Of course, with the new Mustang coming out in 2024, um, it, it should have the new SYNC 4 system in it. So I like SYNC 4. Uh, so far, it's great. Um, I'm, SYNC 4 comes in two versions. You've got the version that I have, which is the, uh, let's call it landscape mode, um, standard SYNC 4 system. And then you also have the newer uh, tablet style where you, you know, all of your audio controls and climate controls are also digital and built into the screen. Personally, I prefer the one that I have because I could see, you know, a lot of problems happening if you say your screen blacked out on you or somehow it got busted or something, then you couldn't access, you know, your climate controls or, you know, your volume or anything like that. Well, you could access the volume on the steering wheel, but you know what I mean. I can see more problems with the full portrait uh, tablet style SYNC 4 system than the, the standard like I have. So, you know, this is an XLT trim style F-150. 
So it's a, it's a middle, middle of the road, you know, it's not the Platinum or Lariat, and it's not the, you know, the XL or the, the STX. It's the, you know, right in the middle, like my uh, 2019 Silverado was. And like I said in the previous video, this truck has everything I want on it and more. Um, I probably won't use all of the features in this truck, but it's nice to have them just in case I do want to. So, yeah, that is a quick overview of Sync 4. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up like and share this channel with your friends. We are... Uh, at 20 about 2200 uh, subscribers right now so i'm very happy with that i uh, hope to see the channel grow and grow even more so uh, be sure and check the links down in the description below we do have a kevin's auto channel merch store now be sure and click on that and check that out there are also a lot of affiliate amazon links down below on products that i recommend that you might want uh, for your car care or accessories or whatever. So be sure and check those links out down below. It helps the channel out and it helps us grow even more. So, thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned a little bit about Sync 4. Like I said, it's a very straightforward system. It's laid out very nicely and it's a lot nicer than Sync 3 was. So, I'm Kevin Walters, you're watching Kevin's Auto Channel, and as always, I hope you have a great day today, and I'll see you in the next one.